Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show to you, my YouTube buddies. Little drink of my cider there. What's going on? Let me know in the comments. What's going on in your world? Let's talk about it. Speaking of the comments, though, we had a very good question in the comments. It relates to yesterday's show. Yesterday we were doing the show about slurry testing. I did a very basic how-to on a slurry test, and I said, do you have any questions? Do you have any comments? And there was, in fact, a question from Larry Vaught. Thanks for the question, Larry. He says, should you be concerned with the water's pH level prior to the slurry test, being that you'll pH the soil after you get the PPM count? Thank you for all you do, Bob. You're awesome. Thanks, Larry. So, in most cases, no, because if you're doing a regular nutrient mix where you mix your nutrients into the water and when you get done, the pH is slightly low and you bring it up a little bit using Olympus Up. If you're doing that regular kind of thing, you don't want to math out the uh, PPMs or the pH of the water because the water is part of what you're doing on a daily basis. It's kind of baked into that number. So important to just take that number as it is. But there are some people that have water that is very low pH, very high pH, where before they do their nutrient mixture, they actually adjust that water. And have whatever you do with that, you need to do that. But um, I talked with, uh, we answered this very question in a viewer questions episode last time around with Scott. And we talked about it for a little bit. There's a little more to it. I think it's kind of interesting. So I'm going to show you that little clip of that video. Watch that. I uh, should give you some more information about this. And I'll talk to you after. This is a good question. Do you subtract, maybe it's not a good question. I think it is. Do you subtract pH of tap water from pH of soil values? So when you're, when you're doing your, uh, your pH and things, does the pH of the water matter within reason? It does, but you also have to keep in mind, I mean, I don't subtract That's the water you're watering with, with, right? If you're always watering with it, then no. So that's the situation, is if you're always watering that water. Without pH in it or checking it, you you're just watering with it, then that is your slurry. Yeah, you can't math your way out of that. No, <laughs> and you can look at them as references. A lot of people be like, you know, it's still, that's a tough one. I, when, well, let me ask you this, does, does it drift with, if you like, say you're doing tap water or well water, whatever, that what's pH in is your gonna, water? Yeah, so it's gonna change over time. Oh, so yeah, if you, your water is heavily treated, your water comes out of a bicarbonate well, uh -huh. then that's going to, just like Olympus up in there, it's gonna slowly climb over time. But I don't know that when I'm doing my regular feedings because I'm ph it after the fact. And so, you know. Yeah, but if you're doing a regular water, and yeah. you should know what that pH is. I just tell people when they ask me this question is, use the water that you use to just water. Yeah. So then we know that that's a saturated topsoil mm -hmm. with your water. Whatever. So if you're at 7.8 and you're watering with 7.8 water, then and you want to know what's wrong with your plant, well, don't subtract that. Yeah, whatever, don't. <laughs> 1.2 pH. Yeah, figure out because, that that's yeah, the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. So, what, do you get? I've had bad luck. It feels like to me, at least, using a meter for that, and I use the the little the tape stuff. For Red mess. Yeah, because the water seemed like it's sketchier for getting the pH numbers. Like they're all over the place to me. Maybe that's just me. I have, I mean, it, yeah, it just boils down to the grower. But I, to yeah. me, the slurry is whatever I'm using regularly for yeah. water. That's mm -hmm. what I'm using to check my slurries, and sure. then I'm double checking with my pen and yeah. just going from there. But I'm not subtract. Trying to figure out that the water is the soil. <laughs> the, you know, it is. A, yeah, blended. Yeah. That's what you're gonna yeah. get. Okay. There's a lot of people though will pH their because they have 8.0 water. Yeah. And with those people, I usually am like, you do want to pH your water because, and not because 8.0 water. We're not. When you're just watering, you're hydrating. Sure. Your plant's not eating the water. Uh -huh. They're just absorbing it and staying alive, and they're feeding the microbes. They're staying alive. The farm, you know, water is just making life. everything happen. It's, it's Yeah, it's preventing them from drying out and dying. Yeah. So that's what watering's for. The, um, the downfall of 8 point you know, or higher water yeah. is that that's a bicarbonate in there. And so even though it's in there at 8.0, the plant's absorbing the water, not the... It's getting something out, out of the water. The, what's left behind is your calcium carbonate that's slowly building up, so your slurries will start to climb on you because of what's being filtered out of your water. It's like you would see the stuff in your pipes where it was got to build up in the pipes. That buildup is in your plant as well. Yeah, and so same thing is that if you have really high pH or really low pH water, I tell people just have a bucket you know, uh -huh. on the side that you adjust to what you feed. Yeah. So if you're always feeding at 6.4 and you start with 8.0 water, you want to pH that down, leave it in a bucket for like two days, make sure it's stable. Make yeah. sure it's done reacting and then water at 6.4 with your thing because uh -huh. you're going to pH your water to 6.4 when you feed and water. 
So you'd put some, you'd probably use Hades or something else in you. Hades or, yeah, any phosphoric acid, drop it, stabilize it, and vice versa. The hard part is if you have 5.6 water, uh -huh. you really, I mean, you just put drops of, I mean, get a five-gallon bucket and uh -huh. start doing drops until you get a stable 6.4. Don't bring because it up you, in one thing. No, drop, no, drop, you're drop, going drop. Chemistry, you're going yes. seven, six, seven, six, six, five. Two, you know. But if you were going down, you wouldn't use Herc or something like that. You would definitely no, you use your Hades down. Pressure. You don't want anything in there. No, you, you want, want the reaction, you want stabilization, and then you want it to go away. Because when add, when phosphoric acid reacts to something, the reaction is done. It changes oh. the properties, and then there's no phosphoric acid left. Uh, I mean, it's literally just it's reacted into, what, turn, it turn it into, turns into something. Yeah, okay. You know, usually rock phosphate when you're doing calcium and uh, phosphoric acid with calcium will just create rock phosphate. So, okay. You don't want to use a new nutrient to pH adjust your water for slurry tests because you're adding in false PPM numbers that shouldn't be there. I got you. Okay. Okay, what do you think of that? Did that answer the question? Did that cover all your concerns with this, Larry, and everyone else? Let me know in the comments. If there's more questions, let's keep going on this. Otherwise, let's move on to something else. What would you like to talk about next? Let me know in the comments. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. The OCG Fam Show. It's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you tomorrow.